Okay, so moving right along to, uh, to the new code, which is a legacy as well from ACI. Uh, if you've got one and if you've had a chance to look at it, you know that it is a completely different document than the, uh, than the previous editions uh, of the code. It's uh, uh, not only completely reorganized, but along the way the committees that were working on the various chapters uh, saw things that they didn't like and uh, that maybe hadn't been looked at in a long time. So there's also quite a bit of revision uh, in the code provisions in this document. Uh, there are uh, documents that are provided by ACI. I believe uh, you can get these for free off the ACI website that will give you the, uh, the uh, key, if you will, to get back and forth between uh, 318.11 and 318.14. Uh, there are two of them. One goes one direction and the other goes the other direction. Uh, and I would recommend that you pick those up if you're, if you're used to using the code and uh, uh, have a certain familiarity with the paragraph numbering the way it was, uh, then it's a good idea to have that available for, uh, for your reference. That being said, the uh, uh, only change that was made to the anchoring the concrete section is that it's now a chapter. Uh, it's its own chapter, 17. Uh, but the actual provisions in 318.14 for anchoring to concrete are unchanged. I'd originally written this slide to say virtually unchanged, but there's no need. They are unchanged. Uh, so. Uh, if you have a provision in 318.11 that you're used to looking at, then you need to get to the same provision in 318.14. Uh, just strip the D off of the paragraph number and uh, demote the next uh, paragraph number by one, and you get the reference in Chapter 17. So D332 becomes 17232. I wish it was that easy on the figures uh, and equation numbers. Unfortunately, those had to be renumbered according to the uh, to the, to the new style that ACI had adopted for chapter numbering. But uh, at least on the paragraph level, uh, you should be able to navigate pretty qu quickly between, uh, between those sections. Uh, and I just want to state that uh, you know, all of the uh, uh, standards organizations are moving toward longer cycles in response to um, a general desire to not change the code so rapidly on the part of the profession. And so these provisions will be in place for a while. Uh, there may be supplements along the way to add things or modify things, but more or less uh, it's going to look like this for uh, a bit. And uh, it would be a good idea to get familiar with the anchoring uh, to concrete provisions if, in fact, you use those regularly in your work. Uh, when I agreed to do this for SK, uh, you know, I talked about it a little bit, and I told him right off, it's going to be very, very tough to cover everything in Chapter 17 uh, in one go. But I'm going to do my best for you today. Uh, I'm also going to briefly try to cover a little bit about what's in the, the 2015 IBC relative to Anchorage, and uh, even briefer, uh, a quick update on, uh, on the Omega Sub Zero situation in uh, ASC 7. Uh, but those are the paragraph numbers we're going to look at. I'm not going to go in depth uh, into any one of them, but I will try to touch the things that I think are most important. Uh, we aren't going to cover some subjects that may be near and dear to you. I, I hope you're not disappointed. We could maybe cover them in a subsequent section uh, session uh, if SK so desires. Uh, we won't cover post-install reinforcing bars. It is the topic du jour in, in a lot of uh, quarters that I interface with, but we just don't have time today. Uh, I'll talk briefly about what they are. Uh, adhesive anchor design I left off the table because we've covered it in past sessions. Uh, some more uh, obscure things that also bear uh, looking at are circular bolt groups and biaxial shear, fatigue loading, fire, corrosion. Uh, again, maybe I can uh, scare up a separate session for those things. Uh, but we're going to try to cover the nuts and bolts of, uh, of chapter 17 today.